leave. Okay, let's look at some uh, follow-ups here. And I think we can see uh, some of these ideas are very useful. And I'm just going to flush them out a little bit. Goal setting starts out with individual goals. How do you do goal setting? You don't do it by just having one big goal, such as low price. Of course, low price is what everybody wants, but you need specific goals. So how do you do it? Individual goals. You try to get as small and specific as you can. These can be single goals or many single goals together. These goals need to be very clear. The more clear they are, the better. The clearer they are, the better they are. They need to be measurable. The more measurable, the better. A student who wants to buy a new cell phone, for example, let's use this example. Let's say this, stu this student, of course, wants to save money because they're a student. They don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, another student may want to get something like the most up-to-date features. They're not really worried about money as much as they're worried about having the feature set. Uh, but in most people's cases, they're a combination of these. Now, I would like to save some money and I'd like to get the most up-to-date features, right? Uh, that's something we learn in consumer behavior. It's really hard to ask consumers what they want because if you give them a choice, would you like to have a low price phone and all the features? Of course, everyone will say, yeah, I want the lowest price with the most features. Nobody will say, I want the least features with the highest price. And very few people say, I want the highest price with the most features, right? They want the lowest price with the most they can get. Of course, uh, in negotiation, you can't get that. So we need to specify what are our priorities? What are the things we're really trying to get? So let's follow on with this kind of uh, example. So we have a student and the student wants to get a new cell phone. So we begin by setting some clear goals to help this negotiation be successful or at least measure its level of success or failure. We need to measure it. So how do we do that? Okay. Let's take the idea of saving money. We begin with, uh, I'm going to want to save money. I don't want to spend money. This can be changed to be more specific. In this case, we can make it something like spend less than one month's pay from a part-time job. So this guy here, he has a part-time job. His part-time job, he makes one month how much? He would like to spend less than that one month's pay from his part-time job. So now he's getting very clear to him, to him, subjectively to him, this is the value he's looking for. All right, let's go on. What else can we talk about? This can be made even more clear, starting with exactly how much less, because he did say less than one month's pay. Well, what do you mean less? Do you mean 1% less, 2% less? And here we get very specific, 50% of my part-time jobs monthly pay. So take his monthly pay from his part-time job, cut it in half, 50%. That's the m money he wants to pay. That's the price he's looking for. Now then, we can add another goal here. And in this case, the goal, the more, one more goal is he wants to get the feature of ability to play MP3 music files. So. At the beginning, we said, I want to have the most features for the least price. Uh, yeah, okay, everybody wants that. But now we're getting specific. Half of one month's part-time pay from his job and make sure that it plays MP3 music files. This is key. Okay, next. Each goal can be judged for its importance because those are two, we're simplifying it, of course, there may be more goals, but let's just do these two. Now, we've got a price and we've got a feature. Which one is most important? Which one is less important? Which one should we focus on first? 50% of monthly pay may be the upper limit with no possibility of going higher and a price of 30% would be better. So now we're gonna say, okay, look, I'm gonna focus on the price and this price can be divided into sub goals. 50% of my monthly pay, that's my goal. But it would be better 
if it was 30% of my monthly pay. So of course, this is lower. Of course, it would be great if the phone was free, zero, that would be wonderful, but it's not. So we're looking at his personal subjective. This is not objective. This is not some kind of business analysis. This is this student's personal feeling of what he's willing to pay, what he thinks his value is for a phone like that. Okay, now we go on to talk about the MP3. The ability to play an MP3 file is a minimum requirement. He must have this. If the phone does not play MP3, then guess what? He's not gonna buy it. So this is a minimum requirement. How much memory do you, does it need to have? Because you need to have memory to have the MP3 file, right? His feeling is this is not so important. Uh, whatever the phone comes with, he can get by. Or maybe he can buy a memory card and put the memory card in so he's not worried about the size. So we've gotten the price and we're very specific. 50% monthly uh, part-time job and better 30%. So we have a kind of layered goal here and feature must be minimum MP3 playing. Memory, more memory is better, but it's not a major concern. Next, we're gonna set these priorities. So let's take a look over at our slides. Okay. If the MP3 playing ability is required, as long as the price is under 50% limit. Next, the MP3 playing ability is required. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat that. Lastly, a lower price would be nice. Kinda of said that already. Now, if he can find a phone like this, if there's a phone with this feature and it has the lower price, of course he would meet his goals. If he can find a phone that's under 50% of his pay, he meets his goal. If he finds a phone that's under 30%, his success can be rated as even higher. So now our student has a pretty clear idea of his goals. If it does not play MP3, game over. It doesn't matter how low the price is, he can't buy it. So these things together are what we call the goal package. Now why is the goal package important? Because it helps you set your goals. And why do we say package? Because as you just saw, it's a little bit complicated. Even this simple one, I got a little bit confused. This is what you think you need. What you think is the value for what you're getting. This is for you to minimize your risk. This is for you to get what you think is the maximal benefit you're looking for, right? Totally subjective. There's not objective. Two different students may have totally different objectives. Their price range, the feature set they want, totally different. But rarely is it so simple as just price, right? Think of a phone as a good example. So we put these different ideas together, these different goals, and this makes up what we call our goal package. So let's take a look graphically at what a goal package can look like. We begin with individual goals. So we talked about this, 50% of my monthly part-time pay, and I needed to play MP3 files. These are my individual goals. Next, how important are these goals compared to each other? And how important are each of them independently? Can you divide them up into sub goals? Yes. Price 50% less than my monthly pay is my goal, but I really would like 30% would be better. So my highest price I'll pay is 50, but I'm targeting 30. And my MP3 demand, this requirement, is a must have. If the phone doesn't have this, no matter how low the price is, 30%, 20%, 10% of my pay, I still won't buy the phone because it must have that. Next, we set up the priorities of these goals. So number one was the price. For this student, maybe for you, maybe for you it's different. Maybe for me, it's different. But for this student here, his goal package, his priorities are just like this. First, 50% on the price. Second, MP3 feature. Third, trying to get a lower price. So what does this, what does this mean? 
what does this priority list mean? That if he went shopping, if he went to the electronics bazaar, and he's looking all over the place, first question is the price. So he's going to cut down the choice set to be all the phones that are this 50% or lower. Next, he's going to look for in this 50% how many of these phones play MP3 files. Now it's gotten smaller. Next, he's going to say inside this group, 50% of my part-time job pay and play MP3, how many of these also have a lower price of 30% of my monthly pay. That sub, sub, sub set would be the one he would choose first. Then he would go around and compare those. If there's nothing left in that set, then he'll compare the next set out. If there's nothing in that set, then he'll go the next set out. So that's why a goal package is really, really helpful. It helps me to keep clear in my mind the things I'm looking for especially while I'm shopping around. And all of this together, we call the goal package. This is the goal package. So very quickly, one more time, right? Individual goals, this could be two, three, four, five, 10, 20. Then each goal is important. How important is it? How important is it, each one? Then which one ranks first? Which one ranks second? Which one ranks third? and all of these together are the goal package. So think about it. an easy way to view this is you go shopping. If you're like me, even if you're shopping online, what's one of the hardest things to do is comparing products. You search here, you search there, you search here, you go all around, you walk here, you walk there. Sometimes if I go to a location like an electronics bazaar and I'm walking through there, like in Hong Kong or Taiwan or China, and they have all these options and all these choices, I get tired out very quickly. I just saw that phone over there, but I forget what its price was. Then I saw this phone and I'm not sure which one's really better. As you begin to learn more about different phones and see their different functions and features, you get more and more confused. And in the end, you get frustrated and you say, okay, just buy this one. And usually when you get home, you're a little bit dissatisfied. Why did I get this one? I should have got the other one. So in negotiation, this is a really well understood problem. How do we overcome this problem? By making the goal package clear from the beginning. Then when you go shopping, then when you compare, you simply say, these options fit. These options fit. These options fit. And when the salesperson says something like, this screen has a 1080p resolution, you say, hmm, that's interesting, but you know what? In my goal package, 1080p resolution is not one of my individual goals. Therefore, this does not really matter. The key question is, does it fit this price range? Does it fit this feature that I'm looking for? If it does, I will consider it. Then later, if I have three phones and all three phones match my goal package, then I can begin to look at other things or talk to the salespeople to see. Maybe I want to create a relationship with that store. Maybe out of these three phones, one of them is a friend of a friend of a friend. I'd like to give, it, give my money to him because then somehow I can get a relationship or maybe next time get a better deal or something, something else, right? So all of these things are possible a little bit later. First, we need our goal package. So our goal package is totally subjective, but it helps us when we then go negotiating to be much more objective about what do we need rather than, well, whatever, whatever, and getting tired out, which is what always happens to me. So the goal package is made up of specific goals dealing with issues of price, things like price, of course, very basic, size, that could be product size, lot size, design, contracts, packaging, service packaging. What's the service package we get? Not packaging, service package. What do you give us in terms of service? Because it may not be a physical product or maybe a physical product and a service product combined. After sale support, after we buy this hardware, what kind of support do we have? Shipping issues, quality issues and many, many other issues. Of course, the things we often think about are price, uh, timing, shipping, design, but there are many others. 
Now, on top of this, there may be other goals that are less specific than things like price or uh, lot size or uh, after uh, after sales service. Those can be very spe specific. If the product breaks, we'll replace it within a year, a warranty, something like this, a manufacturer's warranty. That's very clear. But there are other goals that we call intangible goals. Intangible goals are goals that are not so clear. They're not written down so clearly. You can't really see them. You can't measure them so easily. And yet, they can be very important to the negotiation because they can play an important role. They can also be part of our package, our goal package, the things that we want. So they are not easy to measure, but still could be very important. Let's take a look here at intangibles. If we look at this figure here, we can see at the middle of the figure are the goal package. Okay, we just talked about goal package, right? What's inside the goal package? Price, size, design, contract, service, after sale support, shipping, quality. These things are all fairly measurable. These are all pretty black and white and clear. However, if we look on the outside of this picture, what we see are things like relationship, reputation, getting a deal. Just get a deal means I finish the deal, I, make a, I close the deal, I make a deal. Future negotiations, competition, that is other companies in the market, competition. So if we look at some of these are very easy to understand. Relationship. What does relationship mean? If I buy from you now, maybe we can develop a relationship and in the future you can give me a better price. If I help you now, can you help me later? Or vice versa. If you help me, then maybe I'll help you in the future. Or maybe we have a previous relationship. My company has bought from you before, so I trust you, so I'll buy from you again, even though you may not have everything price, size, design that the other company has. There may be some things you don't have, but still, I think relationship is important. Reputation. I trust you. I know your reputation and or you trust me. Getting a deal. Now this one's actually very interesting. I find getting a deal very interesting. What does this mean? Well, let's say that my boss told me I need to go negotiate and make a sale. If every time I go to make a sale, I negotiate very tough, I negotiate very hard, and guess what? The other side always withdraws. They always leave, they don't, they don't agree. I make no sale. What's my boss gonna say to me after a while? Hey, you know, you never get a sale. And what do I say? I say, yeah, boss, but I work really hard. I'm a tough negotiator. Uh, yeah, you're a tough negotiator, but guess what? You never get a sale. If you never get a sale, you're, you're not making us any money. If you don't make us any money, I'm not sure why we need to have you. So you're fired, <laughs> right? So sometimes just getting a deal is important. If your company is in trouble, even getting a deal that doesn't make profit may be useful just to create cash flow. This is not unusual. Or you may need to get a deal for other reasons. Future, we need to think about the future. If I make a really tough deal now, if I push you on price and I push you on delivery and I make this deal really hard for you, but you need this deal, maybe you need to get a deal. I don't need to get a deal, but I push you, I squeeze you, it's called, and then you agree. What about the future? Will you be happy to negotiate with me in the future? Probably not. So we need to think about in the negotiation, how are we gonna make the other side feel in the future? And of course, another one is competition. Maybe there are many buyers and few sellers. If there are many buyers and I'm a buyer, guess what? I would like to go ahead and get a deal as soon as I can. Even though it may not be the best deal, it may not be the exact deal I want, it may not match my goal package exactly, but because there's many other companies trying to get a deal, I'll hurry up and try to get this deal quickly so I can beat my competition to getting the deal. Okay, so this is the goal package 
And then outside the goal package are intangibles. So that's kind of the sums up the topic for this class today. Now there are some exercises in your book. If you want to go back and uh, take a look at those, we may cover them if you're actually in my real physical class. If you're not in my physical class, then maybe uh, later we'll take a look at them uh, online when I create another online um, exercise. I'm still trying to figure that out, see how that works. Okay, um, if there's any other issues or questions, feel free to email me and uh, good luck with this. Next week we're going to move on to Unit 3. So uh, see you next time in our negotiation. <laughs>